Joining us today to help us better understand the actions and tactics of colonialism and imperialism we see playing out on our televisions and news feeds in places like Venezuela and across continents like Africa is a member of the coordinating committee of the Black Alliance for Peace and an analyst at the Institute for Foreign or for Policy Studies, Natva Friedman. Thank you so much for coming on today. Thank you for having me on. So I, I want to first start with just the idea of like, you know, how do you best describe the, the, the United States kind of current role in Africa that we're seeing right now? Current role. So right now, a lot of people need to understand AFRICOM, the U.S. Africa Command, uh, which is uh, what the Black Alliance for Peace has a campaign against, shut U.S. out of Africa, shut down AFRICOM. And so we're, we're traditionally, after the end of independence and anti-colonial struggles in Africa, the United States got its hand in its, the, the neo-colonial forms of domination, mostly through the multinational institutions, financial institutions like the IMF and World Bank, and using loans and structural adjustment programs, you know, uh, and those kind of things, and also aid, you know, the manipulation uh, by aid, still with this uh, colonial um, white supremacist idea that Africa needed to be civilized, but only different types of, uh, of terminology, like, you know, good governance and democracy and human rights and all those kind of things, and then dangling the way, aid and support in those ways. Um, but now increasingly, we see uh, the U.S. Africa Command, which was established in 2008 uh, by the Bush administration, and then after 2008, 2007, but the Obama administration came in and really proliferated AFRICOM all over. Um, AFRICOM and the establishment of military bases in Africa during this was not the first military base bases, but what AFRICOM did was formalize these military bases, increase them like you know by 1900 uh, percent increase in military bases across the continent of Africa, or, or at least per U.S. presence, I should say, um, across the continent of Africa. And then there are, uh, in terms of military bases, there are about 40 some. Uh, various forms of military bases and and then also military to military relationships when you count them together all of Africa the continent of Africa except for one country that's 53 out of 50 con uh, countries in Africa have uh, AFRICOM in them wow. um, and so now this is the, the new dominance because of the increasing presence and influence of China which mostly is is dealing with um, However you say their, their intentions are, their infrastructural development, right. they are helping with that. But the United States doesn't bring that. It brings militarization Ooh, in the boy. guise of trying to stop uh, the war on terror and those kind of things. Ooh, boy. Right. And, as China, and, and it's been interesting because we've reported on here this idea that Chinese are bringing in infrastructure investments and actually wanting to put money into it, where it's a very different situation with the United States and the West. And I wonder... Looking at, you know, obviously Tyrell brought up Venezuela, and we've seen that. What are the similarities? Well, on the outset, it seems very similar. What are the similarities, you know, real similarities between what's happening in Venezuela and what we're seeing in, mm -hmm. in this commitment inside of Africa by the U.S.? Hmm. Well, um, the similarities versus the... I mean, the, the, the essential similarity is U.S. hegemony mm -hmm. and wanting to dominate uh, the resources and the uh, economy of different uh, of various countries that are not Western countries, uh, want to, wanting the countries to be at the behest of them, being able to extract raw minerals and then sell back finished goods, and uh, which is contrary to self-determination, to independence and self-reliance of countries. So that's the essential thing. Um, what you can see also, which is really uh, interesting, in uh, the Trump administration's approach to Latin America, the just the threat of military invasion and overt threat of military invasion, which the U.S. will always reserve to it. Doesn't matter what what yeah. administration is in office, um, but they're kind of open with it, embracing with it. Mm. Um, and then all, this administration is also doing the same thing in Africa. Just recently, um, in trying to protect its interests in the Congo, Africom and the U.S. deployed uh, troops to Gabon because they were trying to make sure you know the outcome was favorable to them and they didn't want the people rising up and just and uh and disrupting there and then right now uh the outcome they created made the outcome favorable to them and so the similarity again where you see them declaring 
someone president in Venezuela, this is the same thing that they actually done in the Congo, where the current person who really did not win these elections um, is, is being uh, supported by the United States and Western powers. It's interesting, and that, that, it's interesting seeing those parallels, because it's, like, it's mm -hmm. kind of like, you know, different faces, different places, but very similar techniques that you see used mm -hmm. over and over again. Right. You know, the Pentagon, you know, uh, you know they'll justify, you know, the, the argument for AFRICOM is always, well, it's vital to, you know, strengthening our partnerships and, you know, fighting terrorism and all that. And here's my question, you know, to, to that kind of argument. Has AFRICOM in any way been successful in fighting terrorism in Africa? And there have been reports that they were trying to shrink AFRICOM. Is that true? Um, well, actually, the reports are saying they're trying to uh, reduce the um, the troop presence okay. in Africa, and that's always kind of been the the intention of AFRICOM has been to use the militaries of the African countries themselves, mm -hmm. and really may mostly have the troop presence be uh, advisors and special arms forces and those kind of things. The whole idea, because U.S. people, the populations here, don't really see want to see their boots on the ground and tangled in things. So that's always been. Uh, something that they has really been behind it, but that doesn't mean that they still aren't going to protect whatever uh, basic interest they have. And in terms of Africom itself, that's not been the case. We actually see in Niger they're planning to have a drone base because this is what mm. they do. They they replace uh, human beings with and mm -hmm. technology, and and so um, they're having they're planning to have build a drone base. They're building a drone base that in the sec next six years will c cost a quarter of a million dollars. Um, currently, last year, it's already been almost a quarter of a million dollars just on AFRICOM operations alone without the drone base. Billion, you mean? It's a quarter of a billion? No, a million. million. It's a million. Okay. Um, and so, yeah, so, so um, your question was, yeah, has it been successful? No. Um, in fact, we can see with the decimation of Libya, which was an operation between the U.S. and NATO, that these are the, the things and these type of operations have exacerbated the forces that they're that are terrorist forces or deemed terrorist forces and have made them put you know disperse them in different places in in the continent of africa uh the the uh the drones in somalian operations in somalia and these kind of things really make things worse they don't they do the opposite of what uh they claim that they're fighting to do mm -hmm. and what's interesting is on the American side, our reaction to things also tends to have a, a very Western perspective, sort of from the West looking in, mm -hmm. where if you're in Africa, in, on the continent of Africa, in any country, there's a very different perspective of involvement, say, by the Chinese in infrastructure or with Russia, any of that. So just before the new year, the Trump administration, uh, along with National Security Advisor John Bolton, it still kind of makes me sick <laughs> to say that, uh, laid out their Prosper Africa plan um, under the guise that it's sort of protecting Africa from, as they say, predatory practices by pursued by China and Russia that stunt economic growth in Africa, threaten the financial independence of African nations. Um, you've had a chance to look at the plan. Um, does Africa prosper under this plan? Um, no. Now, I have to admit, the plan itself is not really much of a... I've mostly examined what John Bolton's, his yeah. long speech that he gave at the Heritage Foundation when he was talking about this. And there's really no difference in the relationship of the U.S. to Africa or even the previous administration's disposition toward Africa. The only difference is that they will be cooperating less with other countries in, in their hegemonic practices and that they... Uh, that's, pretty much, that's pretty much the only difference. And that they will also will be more strict in terms of how they dispense aid and all these kind of things. I mean, there's really no other difference besides that. But, I mean, people really need to understand. If, unfortunately, people fall for these things because we really don't have a critical view of the deal political uh, role that the United States plays in the world, and particularly in Africa. I mean, there's no way, legitimate way, that we can believe that the United States has um, has a humanitarian, humanitarian or, or benevolent role if we look at just its history and overthrowing the democratically elected police, Patrice Lumumba in the yes. Congo yep. or uh, the coup, CIA orchestrated coup of, of Ghana, uh, um, um, 
Kwame Nkrumah, or even recently the decimation of Libya in the guise of things. Um, and so there's so many uh, examples, and then even you know the troops there's so uh, in, in you know supporting Uganda and and Rwanda uh, uh, strong men or whatever you want to call them. It's, I don't really it's like definitely those one terms, of those but. things that we have to pay attention to, and we when we can't buy the hype. That's in the, in yeah. the, in the nice language that's used right. around it. We have to see through that. And one of those people out there helping us do that is yourself. Uh, Nepta Freeman, thank you so much for coming on today. Thank it's a pleasure so having much. you on, sir. Mm -hmm. Thank you.